PvP, a fundamental part of Ashes of Creation. You may not like it, you may not want to participate in it, but at times you won't be able to avoid it. Ashes of Creation is setting itself up to be what is called a PvX game. Basically, players versus everything. PvP components mixed together with PvE working seamlessly in this world to really keep players on their toes. And this will really begin in Alpha 2. On October 25th, you will find plenty of activity to take part in when it comes to PvP, from caravans to node wars, to fighting it out for resources in lawless zones. But one of the big pieces holding PvP together is something I imagine Intrepid will have their eyes peeled to in Alpha 2 when it comes to receiving feedback. And that system is the corruption system. A system meant to encourage PvP when the situation is right, while also preventing players from just spawn camping and griefing other players for the fun of it. Your basic player is going to start out as what is known as a non-combatant. That basically means you haven't engaged in any sort of PvP activity and are not interested in doing so. Death penalties are in a normal state and everything is great with the world. Let's say though you were out mining some ore, and some guy comes along and steals that node you are about to mine. You want to take the chance to kill him and hopefully get that raw resource drop when he dies, continuing on your crafting adventure. So you engage in combat, and when you do this, you are flagged as purple, which is known as a combatant. Combatant is your base PvP state. Last we knew, you actually suffer less death penalties as a combatant than you do as a non-combatant, so if you are being attacked, it might be worth fighting back and flagging up. This state is what you'll be put in during PvP events as well, that includes caravans, node wars, and any trip you make to the lawless zone. In these events, you won't have to worry about risking the corruption system because, well, PvP is encouraged and everybody is going to be in the same state. Now going back to that guy stealing your mining node for a minute, let's say he doesn't fight back. He just stands there and takes hit after hit, never flagging as a combatant. Then you kill him, well, this is when you would get flagged as corrupted. Any combatant that kills a green player goes corrupt. If you as a combatant kill another combatant, you stay the same, encouraging people to fight players who want to engage in PvP and leaving the rest alone outside of these specific events. Well, when you embrace that red nameplate, you now suffer death penalties at four times the rate of non-combatants. This includes things such as XP debt, skill and stat dampening, dropping raw resources, and durability loss. You also, as corrupt, now have a chance to drop equipped items including weapons and armor upon death, all of which could set you back significantly. And corruption won't be something to get rid of either. It will take you dying multiple deaths at a time to remove that corruption, which means potential multiple item drops, or you can gain XP that will remove it at a much slower rate than death. Now, as a player going into Alpha 2, if you don't like something about this corruption system, or you have ways you think it could improve, make sure you give your feedback to Intrepid during Alpha 2. That is what Alpha 2 is for, they want to gather this feedback, but keep in mind though that the corruption system is meant to be punishing, and it's something that I imagine is not going away, but you could see tweaks to it if players give their feedback and enough people agree on one direction or another. There are also two ways you can freely enjoy PvP and be safe from the corruption system throughout Alpha 2 that we know of so far. The first is what Intrepid is calling Lawless Zones. These zones are a temporary thing in Alpha 2 and not something that will make it to the final version of the game. These zones are the Sand Squall Desert and the Turquoise Sea Tropics. Within these zones, as I said, you are safe from becoming corrupt and will be permaflagged as a combatant as long as you stay within those zones' boundaries. The point of these zones is really meant to simulate what the open seas of Vera will be like in Ashes of Creation because if you didn't know, all oceans in Vera are basically lawless zones that you will interact with through the naval content systems when it finally gets implemented. The draw to these areas will likely be the end game resources that you'll want to find in Alpha 2. Best in slot items that you want to craft will need these high end resources to be gathered, really making groups of players want to go out there and gather it and fight it out. There are also caravan destination points that players will be able to use to bring caravans from Riverland nodes to these areas for higher rewards that I imagine will also drop some pretty nice loot. We do not know though if these areas will be in the game at the start of Alpha 2. Everything on the Phase 1 roadmap, including Lawless Zones, is said to be added by the end of each phase. So that means Lawless Zones may not make it in until around December 20th. 
The other way outside of Lawless Zones to partake in PvP and not rest the corruption system would be through PvP events such as Caravans or Node Wars. For Caravans, well, it's pretty simple. You can summon this Caravan at a node and escort it to its destination, or you can join up with other players doing so. As you come across Caravans in the world, you could choose to help them out and partake in that escort, or you could try to take on the caravan and the players escorting it with a chance to destroy that caravan and get the commodities that are inside it. Taking them from node A to node B will actually increase the value of that material, selling it at a further away node. So it's going to be a pretty common way for players to actually acquire gold. You load up these caravans with what are called commodities that can be purchased from Glint, which is a resource that you'll find through Avera. And then if you escort it safely, you will be able to cash in on that extra gold. If you fail, well, the people who killed your caravan are probably taking those stolen goods and cashing in on them themselves. Node Wars, from what we have seen, will put two nodes against each other in various types of events. The only one of these events we have actually seen, though, is the God Spike event, which has two nodes fighting to claim the God Spike in the Highwayman Hills, rewarding more node territory or world buffs, depending on which side you're on. These events can only be triggered by mayors of nodes and will require the citizens of those nodes to contribute large amounts of resources to fund the war. If citizens don't chip in, well then the war probably won't happen, which is kind of a cool way for node citizens to be like, hey, we don't want this war, we would rather this not happen, we don't want to take the risk of this evolving into something bigger, and they kind of have some control of it so the mayor can't just do whatever he wants. Down the road as Alpha 2 progresses, you can expect many other corruption safe PvP events such as node and castle sieges, PvP arenas, and the entirety of naval content. As I mentioned earlier though, these events won't prevent you from PvPing elsewhere, as long as you're willing to take the risk. The entirety of the world is a PvP zone, and you can kill players wherever you want, except for maybe certain sanctuary areas such as starting zones that Steven hinted towards recently. Otherwise, engage in PvP as your heart desire, just beware of those consequences.